as you say, Chardonnay. And before everybody goes, oh, I ain't Chardonnay, I ain't listening to that. Let's get some perspective, shall we? Because most of you people who say, I don't like Chardonnay, will have a uh, lovely bit of Chablis. Basically, what we say it is, if you like Ch Chablis, you like Chardonnay. In fact, if you like Champagne, again, you also like Chardonnay. There's a reality to the complexity of wine. The bottom line with this bottle of wine is what a fantastic bottle of wine to win. Yeah, absolutely. On a train and a bus in a car on the way to your job. All alone with your kids, with your wife or with your dog. You can listen anywhere. You can listen everywhere. To the Philip Malone Maloney Podcast. Welcome back to the latest installment of the Philip Maloney Podcast. As usual, I am pleased to be joined on this wine tasting venture, uh, episode two of our wine tasting series. Uh, we are at the uh, Glenwood Vineyard and we are on to uh, the next selection of wines. But to introduce those and let me introduce him, we have the charismatic, the enigmatic Mr. Peter Bagley. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Bagley. Good afternoon, Mr. Maloney. Um, All right. uh, First and foremost, nice shirt, uh, th and I'm really <laughs> stepping up to that. Good lad, good lad, that's what we like. And yeah, I mean, but it's good, it's a great occasion. Obviously, slightly different bagage with myself as well, because it is summer. Well, it's not really, however. Um, we're drinking Chardonnay, right? We're, we're, drinking, we're drinking white wine. Today is all about the white wine vino action. And yeah, basically, as you say, Chardonnay. And before everybody goes, oh, I ain't Chardonnay, I ain't listening to that. Let's get some perspective, shall we? Because most of you people who say, I don't like Chardonnay, will have a uh, lovely bit of Chablis. Basically, what we say it is, if you like Chablis, you like Chardonnay. In fact, if you like Champagne, again, you also like Chardonnay. So, Why is that? Why is that? because the predominant or one of the major predominant grapes within Champagne um, is Chardonnay. Uh, Chablis is only, can only be called Chablis if it's made by Chardonnay grapes. Ah, okay. So, well, there you go. So, so that clears that up. Yeah, absolutely. So Chardonnay, uh, so Chablis is an area of France, uh, basically, um, whereas other parts of the world will actually name their grapes, um, France will actually kind of name the areas that they're in. So Chablis, Champagne. But Viva because, la France. Yeah. Um, because they are sp they're specific to their region, but within the region for certain things like Chablis to be called Chablis, it has to be um, Chardonnay grapes. Sounds good. Let's get so into the go. first so, one, baggers. So let, let's crack on. So the first one, we have the unoaked Chardonnay. So, I have a little bottle here for myself. Quality. So, on Oak Chardonnay, so Glenwood Vineyards, this is again the, the, the same run of Glenwood Vineyards. So, this is going to be the most like a Chablis in style because um, this is more kind of um, a delightful kind of on Oak, now, um, uh, which has a different characteristic. But anyway, I'm glad you got a, a nice large slug there. Good work. <laughs> this is a taster. Tasting um, yes, measure. Yes, absolutely. I've taught you well, my son. <laughs> 25 mil, that. <laughs> so, it begins. so this, like. you know, this is, you know, a lovely kind of light yellow hue. Um, and yeah, just get your nose in and, you know, frill the freshness. You know, beautiful, mm. beautiful citrus notes. Uh, we were on last year's wine. Yep. The last episode we spoke about um, a little bit around uh, with the um, uh, Sauvignon Blanc, yep. Sauvignon uh, Bordeaux blend. Yep. Uh, and what was that? 2018, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So you were saying about how um, wines, you know, white wines, uh, clean, fresh white wines, you can have them quite young. Yep. We've got a range here between 2000, so between last year. So we're talking potentially uh months old yeah as opposed yeah. to years because yeah. we're in, we're, you know here we are in march 2021 yeah. and this is a 2020 
uh, unoaked Chardonnay. So Absolutely. we're talking about a very young wine here. So it'll be interesting to see the comparisons between this and what we find with the uh, 2018 and indeed the 2015. Absolutely. So first and foremost, have a good little slurpage. So again, the, the kind of modern myths are, or should we say, the, the some, some myths about Chardonnay is it's all about only tropical fruit. It's all about kind of just um, oak and nothing else uh, without actually going, actually, there's lots of different styles of Chardonnay, um, which we are going to be going through. Yeah. And, it, you know, so here is an on note. So basically it, it's matured in and fermented in stale stainless um, vats. And yeah, um, so there's no kind of wood um, correlation to it. So that's why you've got that quite minerally, um, a little bit of kind of. It's quite nice citrusy steely for me. Kind of finish. Kind steely. Of, steely, yes. Steely, yeah, I can yeah. get that. It's, it, it is quite a. Um, Sort of metallic yeah. elements, but in a fresh kind of way. So it's not yeah, metallic not unpleasant in a, by any stretch. Uh, kind of way. Yeah. So um, you know, what, more, what more of a sort of a, a, a like a crisp, clean taste to it. Um, yeah, I mean, um, to be honest, you know, be, uh, there's a, there's real lime zest to it, which is atypical of you kind of um, your shabbily, to be honest. Um, so you, you've got those kind of similar characteristics. So the two kind of predominant flavours, certainly within French um, Chardonnay, will be kind of lime with the Chablis and kind of lemon with the more kind of more southern. Um, so other names would be uh, Pouli Mont Rachet, um, Chazan, Coton, uh, just different little areas. Macon Village, who you know you may see in, in shops, um, all different areas of the um, Burgundy region. Lovely. But Lovely. Uh, yeah, so th this has a as I say more kind of limey kind of uh, notes to it. Uh, lovely citrus. Yeah, maybe maybe my palate isn't. Um, uh... As, as as used to it but I'm, I'm definitely getting quite a lemony um back of my mouth taste um to this uh, yeah like a, like a real sort of rindy um yeah uh, there's that kind of a very kind of zesty um mm. kind of shot almost shot grapefruit bread. almost yeah. grapefruit like yeah like a like yeah it's like a lemon and lemon and grapefruit um, should we say i'll go lime lemon grapefruit that's the sure. kind of order of play. Yeah, 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 I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't argue around that. <clears throat> and but yeah, I mean, lovely crisp, lovely finish. Um, what's 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 beautiful is that that will just carry through. This is a this is summer in a glass. Mm. This is your start to the summer, and this is like right. Let let's start things off well. Boom. Yeah. Face. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, and what would you put that with food-wise? Food-wise, to be honest, I mean uh, stuff like mulls, uh, so mussels. I'd, I'd go certainly, see, uh, definitely seafood. If you're gonna go, I wouldn't go too spicy, but kind of gentle spice, so gentle mm. kind of very kind of gentle, kind of lighter, so like Thai spice, but mm. the, you know the the. Not the kind of heavy Thai spice, but the kind of more chilled out. Yeah. Um, you know, definitely would kind of go with that. Yeah. Um, like, but yeah. I, we are talking the same language here because in my mind, as I drink that, like one of my favorite things is the, um, <clears throat> uh, like a Thai papaya salad. You know, you get the papaya salad yep. with all that sort of, uh, uh, citrus but chili and stuff mm -hmm. like that as well now that's not necessarily like a curry yeah. spice but it's more of like those fresh uh fragrant chilies and lemongrass and things like that absolutely like that. So, yeah uh, and, and i'd even go and i know it's, it's a thicker more darker kind of um dish but i'd say a seafood paella yeah 
uh, yep. would also kind of but the kind of lighter more kind of like prawns kind of mm. the kind of shell food the sea, seafood paella yeah. so yeah, absolutely where we had the um uh the wine in the last series the um uh sauvignon blanc yep auto mix auto yeah, blend yeah. Well done, um man. You could instantly tell that that was going to be good with cutting through fats. Yeah. You know, um, really good for sort of slicing through fats. But this is a different type of citrus note to it. It feels yep. almost like that this is more of a uh, an enhancing citrus yep. flavor. Yeah, yeah. So absolutely. it would enhance other citrus type meals. You know, yeah, yeah. anything with like sort of anything that you would sort of uh, blitz a lemon over or have with, you know, those sort of citrusy lemongrass. Uh, Lem lemongrass, uh, Moore's Marinade with lemongrass would be amazing with mm. that. I'd, and also going a little controversial, I'd say, you know, something like key lime pie. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Because, yeah. It, you know, it, it's got that zinginess and it's got that slightly creaminess. But, yeah. you know, the acidity would certainly cut through the creaminess. Mm. But it would also be paired with the lime action. Mm. Similarly with lemon drizzle cake, the, yeah, kind of yeah. the lemon element would go with that. It's not too kind of custardy and, and like, it's not custardy in any way, shape or form. Yeah. So it just means that what you've got is the kind of elements of the citrus cutting through the kind of cakey bit. And with the key lime pie, you've got the creaminess Beautiful. that it cuts through. So yeah, yeah, definitely. But to be honest, just, Sitting on a beach, I mean, you know, unfortunately, by itself, it be, yeah. yeah, yeah, you know, it's very good. I love the know, grapefruit, I love that, I love those citrusy notes in there. I can still get them on my palate. Um, yeah, I think that's, I think that's a really nice, that's a really nice Chardonnay. And, 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 and the so they've got, they've got two, um, so hard to find wines, the delightful hard to find wines, uh, have got um, two uh, ages for this. So they've got a 2020 currently at 14.99, and they've got a 2018 at 15.99. So um, you know why not try both? And then you can see how age develops and and how your palate develops as well. You know if you like, if you're kind of scared of the oak chardonnay, go with your note and see how the ages go because it gives you that little palate to go oh actually if i like a little bit more viscosity if i like a little bit more slightly difference mm. then you kind of can move in a little bit easier to the kind of more oaky stuff no fantastic fantastic no. so 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 that is the glenwood chardonnay 2020 unoaked yes. Oh no, um, Chardonnay, 2020, bang off the, uh, you know, brand new in. Um, and for me, that is, that's a cracking, you know, Friday night, Saturday afternoon, kind of on the beach or in the park, you know, sharing with friends, you know, get, feeling the love from both the wine. Uh, social distancing uh, regulations, of you know, course. taken taken into taken into consideration as well but let's let's bang on to the and next one then bench nicks are the new thing so uh or will be certainly from monday bench, uh, nicks. bench nicks yeah so that's oh, a like little it. terminology um and um, yeah so that is basically um where you have a picnic on a bench socially distanced one at one side and one at the other and you can pass over drinks so there I love you go the explanation. fantastic <laughs> <laughs> And so the right. second one we've got, so this is the Vineron, Vineron Selection. So Vineron Selection is Ooh, just basically... Just hold that up. Just just hold it more in front of you because I think the... There we go because of the background. And obviously yes, I'll be go. putting up the... Um, I'll, I'll be putting up the images as well uh, as we go. Lovely. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, so the Vineron Selection, um, basically a nice way of saying this is the... Uh, these are grapes that are specifically um, racked and chosen specifically for this blend. Uh, it's mm -hmm. a blend of, when I say blend, what I mean by that is it's the Chardonnay uh, grapes. But this is basically all the kind of Chardonnay grapes from um, a, quite a select a little plot. And effectively what it is, is um, what... DP, the delightful DP Burger, the mm. delightful winemaker who's just quality. He oozes class and just 
an all-round nice guy. But his uh, selection of grapes in this, um, and also we are going on to a different style. So this is a oaked Chardonnay. So this is the first of the two oaked Chardonnays. Again, try not to be over, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult when you may have tried something and you go, oh, I don't like that. Try and be open-minded because, you know, lots of different winemakers, lots of different things have different philosophies. And this is a boutique. This is somebody who wants to, it's not your kind of massive overproduced, wants to give any old nonsense to anybody or nonsense because they want to sell shed loads of stuff. This is somebody who cares about the craft. This is them going, this is the best grapes on my plot. This is me saying to you, drink it, enjoy, have a whiff, get it down your face. Well, I'm definitely going to have a look at that. The first thing I notice is the uh, depth of colour yep. for this. Um, we're, looking at a, we're looking at a real, uh, <clears throat> you know, much more much more sort of what yellow yeah yeah is, is that is that polite uh, yeah, no, so, absolutely. yeah it, it, <clears> so, so we're looking at a deeper a deeper color for the yes. white wine here uh, and instantly on the nose you can tell that there is um uh there's more age there i guess because there's more sort of substance to it from a 2020 yeah. it, with it, in that in, in that two years as it were yeah from me that's all I've, you know, that's, that's, that's what no, I've got. Absolutely. I um, mean, there's, there's two parts to it. One, yes, it's the kind of aging bottle will all, it will give an, an extra dimension. Although two years is not massive. Um, but what's the, the big influence here? Well, I'll say the big influence. Also oak as well, is, yeah. But the oak, so DP uses different oaks and different charrings and different toasts mm -hmm. um, for the, for the, for the barrels that he uses and so uh, to give different expressions and, and and kind of a balance to his wine so this will the oak will mean that the grapes kind of go into the oak um in certain temperatures and then come back out so have that influence so you may you know you may find there's a little bit of kind of woody notes but you know there may be what we call vanillin uh, so there can be some vanilla notes, but effectively more so, it's about the texture. It's the kind of actually where the other one was very kind of quite light and zingy, crisp. You know, this is a got more viscous. This is a little bit more, you know, heavier mm. and almost without kind of sounding snobby or anything. You might go, oh, this is a bit more serious. They're all serious because they're all lovingly made, but this has, you know, this can be, you know, this is where, yes, there's a little bit more challengeness to it. And, you know, but what I like about this, just from, just from the smell, just from the aromas, yeah. you've got that characteristic of the, the lime, the lemon, you know, but the lemon's more kind of pronounced in this one. Um, there is, you know, a little bit of your grapefruit, a little bit of your tropical fruit, but unfortunately, a lot of people, again, especially within the UK, will go, I just want a dry wine. So when mm. you say tropical fruits, because tropical fruits give a <coughs> sweet. perception mm. of sweet because they are sweet fruits. Mm. However, if you took all the sugar out of a peach, but you still have the same flavour profile. That's effectively when uh, somebody describing tropical fruits, mostly, unless it is a sweet wine, that's what you're getting in the glass. Mm -hmm. And that's really key because, you know, Chardonnay, unless they are like late harvest and they're kind of ripened to the max yeah. and over ripened, won't be sweet. But people, because it's got a smell of maybe kind of white peach or, you know, um, you know, passion fruit or whatever, they'll, uh, people will say, oh, this is too sweet for me. It's like your your brain naturally thinks, oh, because it smells like this, it's mm. sweet. There's 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 definitely the. Um, how do I describe it now? I get exactly what you're saying. When you eat a fruit closer to its seed. Yeah. Then the outside flesh. Yeah. 
you get those kind of um, you get the dryness yep. of of that part of the fruit, yep. which is close to the seed, yep. than it is than than to the outer outer edge. That's what this is full of. Yeah, um, there's there's lots of that, and it creates that sort of dryness mm. um, when you're eating the fruit, as mm. well as when you're when you're drinking the wine. And that's uh, yeah, that's 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 very very nice. And nice. what I love about this, this is this is a clear oaked expression that is, I I would say, is a great opening to what um, you know different Chardonnays can do. And this is what I love about the little range of um, of the Chardonnays because that uh, DP creates because you can get the whole range. But actually, certainly the this one as well is you've got. A nice little halfway house and it's actually like that's nice and dry it's got a little bit of acidity but it's also got but it's not overpowering so it's not mm. a punch in your face new zealand Sauvignon blanc but actually for some foods and especially when you're pairing with foods that would be awful you know that'd be the worst combination ever whereas you know a high end level you know when when you're talking the next two wines when you're talking about kind of high end fish high end produce that just needs a little bit more something special and care and attention you st- you have to start looking at different things to go mm. wow that's a marriage made in heaven yeah this is this is this is nice there's even a um uh there's a very strange um sort of after like what lingers on your palate yeah the fish um, at the end we say fish no yeah oh, so finish finish uh, so so it pairs with fish but the yes. finish as but your, finish. your so so when 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 so, so the key kind of elements to kind of the wine tasting you've got the aromas mm. you've got the palate and then you've got the finish right yeah so this finish is, um, I think it's where I, if if I was to describe anything as sort of oaky or what have you, yeah. uh, that's that's where I can that's where I can find it. Sort of mm-hmm. right on the back of my tongue, as I sort of breathe in and out. Yeah, um, there is a distinct like oakiness, leatheriness. Um, wood- uh, uh, there's a slight woodiness. However, what I'd also go, I'd go. Think about nuts. It, ha- it gives it a little nutty element to it, but yes. not your kind of peanuts and kind. Of, no, no, no. It's, it's like a Brazil kind of, macadamia. Yeah, type. absolutely. Yeah, it's macadamia. A bit more, it's a very bit more much creamy. like Brazil. Yeah, it's like a yeah. I I would say sort of like a like a macadamia nut. Yeah. Uh, at at the back there because ma- I find macadamias are like really fatty, really full of full of cream and things like that. Mm. You know, so it's kind of it feels more like that. Mm. Uh, even like yeah. a hazelnut as well, kind mm. of. But yeah, but I think your macadamia, uh, I love that. Um, you know, that's yeah exactly what I was thinking. So brilliant, you know, good work. And again, the question is, and, and you know, this is the beauty of tasting and tasting different things. Do you like it? Is it something that you would go to? Um, is it something a little bit more challenging that you you go? If I said, okay, if I, said I want a uh, you know Glenwood 2018 Chardonnay, or if I saw it on a, yeah. in, in a restaurant or what have you, yeah, um, would I go for that over you know uh, the 2020 or another Chardonnay or what have you? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know yet. But um, what what does um, what does intrigue me and what has kind of like, um, you know, before every podcast, I always think about the podcast. What's it going to be like? You know, how's it going to be? Is is it worth doing three Chardonnays? What can you get from having the difference between three Chardonnays? And I've already, number one, number two, we are worlds apart. Mm-hmm. We're worlds apart as far as Chardonnays go. And there's so much, um, there's so much difference just in these two from mm-hmm. a layman. Mm. Uh, from a layman's perspective, this one is definitely more sophisticated. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> the 2020 is um, what I would deem as like a uh, like an all day drinker type. Yep. You know, you could have you could have a couple of bottles of that with friends, and 
um, not have to think about it, not have to worry about it or what have you. So that's a real easy drink. Yeah. This one has um, a bit more of a, uh, certainly a bit more complexity to it um, mm. than, 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 than the other one, but not, not, knock it, not knocking it. Uh, no, no, absolutely. It's, it's got its place. But there's a bit more sophistication in there. Yeah. When you absolutely. tell me the prices, I'm sure there's probably yeah, absolutely. Sort of so there. again, um, so this is sixteen ninety nine. Right. Um, yeah, uh, because it's the Vineron selection, it means that it is, mm. um, it's the uh, it's like more kind of tighter um, grape selection. Um, so you get less bottles, um, and so yeah. Um, commands a little higher price uh, but you know again you know it's not wildly out there you know to, to put you in context so that would be in a similar vein shall we say to, probably to, to a kind of a merso I'd say to be honest <laughs> um, and a, you know a merso bottom end merso you're looking at 30 quid a decent Merso, you're looking at 60 to 100, right. realistically. So, okay. you know, I mean, 17 quid and 10% off, you know, that's absolute fantastic. You know, yeah. just over 15 quid for... If that um, was fizzy, if yeah. that was fizzy and you gave it to me as a champagne, I'd be really happy. Yeah, you, basically, you'd, pay, you'd be paying like 50... Uh, 40 50 quid easy. yeah yeah you know? yeah you wouldn't expect um you know if that yeah if that had some bubbles going through it that yep. would be um that would be no problem at all as as, as 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 a champagne um yeah no that's very nice i like that good i'm glad, I'm like glad that. have you got some blurb on it have you got some more uh um understanding i mean you know i think we've gone through the vinegaron and uh Absolutely. Reason, the reasons for that so and the when price, etc. When I when I went there, and I know you've got some pictures that you know, uh, you know when I when I stayed at the vineyard, um, just actually going around and, and just picking the grapes uh, was just beautiful. Um, just to be able to kind of to go, okay, so I've eaten the kind of raw grapes. Then you get to go and actually why you are kind of, and this is why I'd implore anybody who is in South, you know, goes to South Africa, you know, travel over to French Hook, get on the wine trail and uh, go visit Glenwood because, yeah, you get to go into the vineyards. Uh, you get to go and not only, you know, try a little bit of the grapes on, in the vineyard, but actually you get to go and try both in the vineyard and if you want to, I definitely implore you to go and have a meal there. Uh, they do a lovely tasting menu. I know I've sent some pictures, so hopefully that will be able to yeah, yeah. show. Yeah. And yeah. They, what they do is a lovely tasting menu and where you try and it's paired with all the wines, um, both the Chardonnay, the Merlot and the, and the Syrahs slash Shiraz. And it's absolutely wonderful to try. And, you know, the backdrop is beautiful. Um, but, yeah, uh, uh, the care and attention to detail and the hospitality um, is second to none. So, yes, I mean, um, that's definitely a major plug. I mean, again, um, when DP, obviously, uh, not during lockdown, but prior to lockdown, um, Hot Fine Wines has had a few tastings um, in in basically. Oh, uh, um, I'm trying to think of the. Now, unfortunately, the name of the the, the restaurant and the thing had, has gone completely away. It's going to come to you. I will let you know. And uh, but basically, it's in Mayfair. Okay. And it's absolutely um, to Chesterfield. There you go. I knew it would come to me. So they have a, they have quite a few little tastings there um, when they are made to get down. DP has come over and showcased the wine, and it's it's been absolute a joy. Um, yeah. There's been some friends that have been able to to get with that, which is brilliant. But yeah, um, so the next one that we're about to go on to so this is 
um, significant on several things. So this is the, again, Vineron selection, but it's of uh, 2015. So there we are. There you go. And um, it's got 4.5 4 um, platter points. So just under the five, big five, uh, but their Grand Duke, uh, which is even a step up from this, um, has won five stars. They have had a Vineron selection, I think it was 2014, which I think, unfortunately, and the Similion um, Sauvignon Blanc um, got a five star as well. Um, so they're actually winning a lot of plaudits. So Plaza being the big kind of uh, award system in South Africa. So 4.5 is effectively just, yeah, critics love it. Now, this, as I say, is a, even darker. That is part, partially because of the... Um, of the aging um and uh, yeah but also depending on the years depending on how the grapes are uh, dp will kind of decide the level of toasting that's in the barrels and if um you know the level of toasting is um larger then the darker the kind of color so mm -hmm. yeah but again, don't be put off. There are people that get put off by the colour of the wine. If you're that bothered uh, right now about the colour of the wine, close your eyes. Don't look at what you're drinking until you've tried it. Go in there completely neutral. If you don't like it, you don't like it. Hey, you know, it's not, and things are not to everybody's, you know, thing. However, go with an open mind. Try everything. So, so that it, that again. So, <laughs> this is what I kind of slightly referred to uh, in the whiskey podcast. Do go and check it out if you like the whiskey. Um, this is what I like to call Burgundian filth, <laughs> and this really is that kind of again. You might go. Well, I'm not sure about that, but all I'd say is one of the best wines I've ever tasted was a white burgundy, and it smelt effectively like you're on a farm. You know, it's silage, you know, but... Oh, hey, what I'm going to say about this wine... Yeah. Is, sorry, so, sorry to interrupt you, mm. but um, <clears throat> pouring it out, the mm -hmm. colour is amazing. Mm -hmm. It's got an amazing colour. It's almost like effervescent in the, in the yellow that it produces. Yeah, it's. I don't know if the cameras can even. Yeah, that's sort of pick lovely. Up on yeah, that. you get that. It's, that it's nice absolutely gorgeous. Color. It looks. It looks. It's so. And then even on the nose. Yeah. It's incredible. It's yeah. it's really nice. I've got so many sort of like. It's um, multi layered. Yeah, absolutely. Like, you know, you sniff it, you can smell like the woodiness. You sniff yeah. it, you can smell, um, you know, that the, the sweeter fruits through, yeah. through smelling it. Um, and then the taste of it is lovely. It's really yeah. nice. Very I, pleasant. What I love about that. So, you you know, for some, some will pick up a, a little bit of Burgundian filth. Some <laughs> will, um, but, you know, there's the kind of, it does the kind of forest floor kind of thing. There's mm. the kind of woody notes. There's the characteristics that you get with Chardonnay and certainly, you know, with the Glenwood brand. Uh, that, again, you kind of, your, your lemon, your lime, um, you know. But again, what you get is the more uh, some tropical fruits, some creamy notes. Yeah. But it's all balanced. And this is the beautiful thing. It's balanced. It's just, you know, this is one that you will end up drinking the whole bottle and go, 
I didn't think I'll be able to drink the whole bottle. You know, this is so complex. This is so got lots of elements to it. But, you you know, if you were having a meal, you'd have that. And then do you need pour to it afterwards? No, you crack on with that. You carry on because it is so delightful and wow yeah. so so it's got like a um when you say forest floor there's definitely like a uh there's definitely like a truffly mushroom note mm, absolutely there, um which is which is almost like it's instant it goes away and then it comes back again you know and i've <clears throat> for those people who know me they know that i'm no wine buff okay yep. but so those are really honest Mm. opinions you know because people can say like a oh, wine you know what is it but then i always think well so many people do appreciate wine not because it's poncy or toffee or what have you yep. you know um but there's a there's a reality to the complexity of wine which is undeniable and it's like you know for all the times that i've drunk wine i've always drunk wine with a very open mind, you mm. know, as to the differences in there, um, mm. which is not necessarily what everybody does, and not everybody has to do that. Um, no, no, I mean, you know, whatever your reasons for drinking, um, you know, wine, no, uh, you know, whatever, whatever brings you in, all I'd say is, you know, don't be afraid to try the spectrum of wine, because actually the, you know, <laughs> The kind of Prosecco, uh, you know, Pinot Grigio that you may kind of love now, try, you know, have a variation because actually you may then, you know, not to say you won't necessarily dislike that going forward, mm. but it just means you've got a variation and, and yeah. actually your, your, your palate then becomes alive to different flavours and open to different food groups. Yeah, it's nice to be able to do that. It's nice to be able to do that, definitely. And, and, you know, I mean, what I love about what I love about the UK, but what I love about kind of traveling, what I love about, you know, you know, meeting different people, you know, you know, and across doesn't have to be with it, you know, not in the, the wine trade or anything like that, but actually just meeting people from different backgrounds, different areas, you know, from wherever you get different flavors you get different experiences and you know the glorious thing is now drinks and there's certainly drinks business where they're starting to come into their own is rather than well oh, just drink a pint of beer or i drink this there's beer menus there's whiskey menus there's wine menus there's you know there's non-alcoholic cordial menus that will uh you know there's things that are there for everybody's taste and preferences that is able to go actually i'm having this what's he gonna good with yeah okay so i'm having i'm having a dry january okay where can i pick up a wine that may, or a or a beer that may taste like this because i know it goes well with this let's crack on and and having that kind of you know, more open, uh, that open mind is brilliant because it just, it gives you that extra experience. Uh, very good. Very good. You know? And Chardonnay's Chardonnay's such a, um, such a nice wine to drink in the sunshine. Mm. You know, it really is. Um, and I think that uh, it's mission accomplished on these Chardonnay's because I think we've, we, we found um, uh, three very different, three very different Chardonnay's. So let's talk about the price point. On, yeah, yeah on, 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 and, on this one and so this one this one actually so um the 2015 we've got obviously we're tasting this and some lucky winner <clears throat> will be winning this little number Sorry. um but actually hard to find wines as of i think last week possibly um have actually kind of run out of the 2015 but i would employ I'd actually employ you to, I think the next one they've got that's of us, you know, is the next one along, which is I think the 2016. That at the time was retailing around 30, 25, 30 quid, if I remember rightly. Um, so, you know, and for me again, yes, that's a, that's a big jump in a lot of people's purses, 
totally agree. Um, but again, that, that's a why in that you'd have, you know, when you're celebrating something, when you're going, okay, I want, you know, it's my birthday, or yeah. I, I want, I want something special, you know, I'm meeting somebody special, I want to, you know, whatever, um, Absolutely. your reason behind it. But you know, it, this, you know, this itself goes from the parameters of what it per, uh, pairs with. It pairs with seafood. Yeah. It, it pairs with. You know, it pairs with seafood, it pairs with poultry, so chicken, turkey, it pairs with, you know, your vegan dishes, it pairs, you know, like a, again, Nuts. that kind of mushroom risotto. Yeah. Um, but also kind of the, as you say, the truffly kind of elements to mm. it. Truffle parmesan chips. So if you just think, actually, all I want is some chips. <laughs> Pick it up. I want some chips and a thirty-pound bottle of wine. Yeah, but with truffle and parmesan on it, boom shakalak, um, yeah, away you go. But you're you know, right. you've got uh, you've got things like pork uh, that will go well with. You mm -hmm. know, that will go amazingly with that. Yeah, um, it's got so many different levels. Seafood. You know, but, uh, you know, it's a, Listen, for me, the, bottom, the bottom line with this bottle of wine is what a fantastic bottle of wine to win. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, you know, like, share, subscribe, comment, You'd be a fool not to comment, comment. Give send us a, comment. a picture Please. of you yeah. enjoying some wine. And who knows, you could be the next person to win a lovely bottle of Glenwood Chardonnay 2015. Pete, tell us about what we've got to look forward to next week. So we've got uh, next week, we've got the Glenwood Shiraz, little numbers. So we've got Save Our Rhinos, which is a ethical, uh, ethical wine that I implore everybody to get involved with. And we've got the Vineron Selection um, Shiraz, Shiraz, sorry. And again, but same, uh, they're, they're all Shiraz grapes, so red. So we're going from white to red, get involved. If you can, get on the site and buy and, and taste with us. And all I'd say is uh, enjoy. Enjoy. Drink responsibly. Great. Thanks very much, Pete. Thank you, everybody, uh, for tuning in to the Philip Maloney podcast. We'll see you next week. Head out on the uh, Hard to Find Wines website. Maybe maybe buy a bottle and uh, join in with us as we uh, as we go through, because next week we will be um we will be uh, announcing the winner for the um glenwood chardonnay 2015 hope to see so you then. like share and subscribe like oh. share and subscribe absolutely thank you very much mr bagley all the best it's been emotional cheers on a train and a bus in a car on the way to your job all along with your kids with your wife or with your dog you can listen anywhere, you can listen everywhere to the Philip Malone Lonely Pod.